Welcome to part three of this Winter Chickadees painting demonstration. In this part, I'm going to be painting the branches, doing some glazing, and doing final details. So like in the other first two parts of the video, a lot of this is at either two times speed or four times speed just to keep it moving, but not so fast that you can't follow what I'm doing. And there may be some sections, I think there's some sections in here where I actually show you what I'm doing in real time. So we'll slow it down where necessary. So for the branches, I'm just going in now and establishing my, re-establishing my branches with a darker color. This is um, some Payne's gray and some raw umber. And a little bit of white to lighten it. There is a touch of, um, cadmium red in here just to warm it up a little bit and then after getting the darks established I'm going in on the upper side of some of these branches and getting a little bit of light most of all of this certainly the top half of all these branches is going to be covered by a combination of some texture and and moss lichen and then snow so I'm not again worried too much and I I don't want to detail these branches too much because the tension I want to be on the birds. Um, so by keeping these from having too much detail, especially the back branches, I won't draw too much attention to them. So here I'm just going in again and you know making sure that I have a couple of values represented on these branches so that they look like they have a little bit of a shape instead of just being flat. Um, here this is slowed down so I can show you that uh, after getting the basic branch established I want to sort of get some texture worked in there. These branches, are, I, I actually took a branch from outside and hung it on top of my easels for reference. And they have a lot of, you know, sort of scaly bark, a little bit of lichen, a little bit of texture. So I'm going in with a, a lighter color from the branch color. I added some white to that. And just a touch of yellow with the Payne's Gray that just greens it a little bit. You don't really see it here, but it's, it's working a little bit more towards green. And you can see that I'm putting down some paint and then I'm turning the brush around. I'm using the end of that brush just to sort of use... Um, is a, a scraffito technique or a, a just tapping that paint and scratching it a little bit so that instead of having flat color of paint there I get a little bit of that undercolor coming through and I move that paint around so it just looks a little bit more like uh, you know, some texture so now I've moved you know that I've shown you how I did that in real time I sped this up a little bit so we can keep this video moving but again um, most of a lot of what you see here is going to be covered again by snow so I just want some indication here that there's some texture on that bark on those trees a little bit of lichen and um, to do that I'm applying this lighter color and sort of scratching it in a little bit here I've lightened it a little bit more going over some of those same spots just to create more than one value in there so there'd be some shadow and some areas where the light hits and I, in the video I'm not going to show you me doing that for all the branches um, in the background specifically but I think you get a grasp of the technique that I'm using here to just sort of create some interest on those branches they're not smooth flat branches so I wanted to make them look a little rough I did less of this underneath the birds because there'll be an even darker shadow and um, again I didn't want to draw too much attention away from the birds so I'm keeping the underside of the branch a little bit less detailed up there. Add back a little shadow. The undersides of these branches I lost some of the shadow so I added it back in. Here is the other panel. So just going through quickly to show you that I'm doing the same thing. Again, I took that branch color, which was some umber, a little bit of red, a little bit of Payne's Gray, and 
I lighten that up and added a little more Payne's gray and a little bit of yellow just to give it a little bit of a green tinge for the for the lichen that's on the branches. Here I'm going back with a lighter tone on top. Again, turning the brush around using the tail end of that brush, the hard part, just to sort of scratch in some texture on the paint that I'm putting down. Tapping it, scratching it, pushing it around a little bit. So once I have the branches done, then the next step is to start to add in some snow and that'll be coming up here in just a moment. So for the snow, I'm again, I'm again following the same basic rule in that I want at least three values of color. I want the darker shadowed snow underneath, I want sort of a mid-tone snow, and then the bright highlights on top. So when I get to the snow, you're going to see I'm going to follow the same technique, sort of put down my darkest snow color first. You see it here. And then I'll go over that with a mid-tone color. And then at the end, and then after that, I'll put on an even brighter top coat for the brightest part of the snow. So for the snow, um, I mixed my gray and my white. So you see, when I first put that down, I, you saw the value shift there. I really had it too bright for the darkest snow shadow color. So I went back and added some Payne's Gray in there and darkened down that mixture just so that I could have a nice shadow color underneath for that snow. This is covering up you know some of those branches I'm letting some of that branch texture show through but some of it will get covered up and I'll just go through all these branches starting with that darkest color and then I'll go in on top of that I'll lighten that up to get a mid-tone snow value just what I'm doing here I'm still using that small flat brush but I'm using the mostly the corner of it and putting the paint on so that it's uneven. You can see that I'm putting it on uneven here. You'll see me at times here, turn, there we go, turn it over and use the tail end of that brush again to sort of push that paint around a little bit. It's not so much that there was an inch of snowfall on these branches, it was more just like a coating of snowy frost or you know just a light coating of snow. So by sort of keeping these applications of snow erratic and tapping in that color I can move it around and make it look like it's just catching parts of that branch and it's fallen off of parts of the branch. Here I'm going back now and you can see when I add the brightest color it makes the edge of that branch start to stand out from the background. That mid-tone was very much a close value to the background and it sort of made that branch disappear but once I add the bright on top it makes it pop right out. Here up in that corner, I didn't like the fact that that branch was drawing attention right next to that bird. So it's a little bit off camera, some of it, but I just mixed up my background color again and I'm just going in and I'm painting out those branches. So there was a mistake in, the, in putting those branches in there. So I'm just going in and removing them. The other thing I don't like is I don't like the edge of that leftmost bird, the, the little bit of wing that's showing just seems to be drawing too much attention to my eye and pulling me over there. So in a minute, you're going to see I'm going to take that out too and just have the breast of that bird showing. And I'm just going to paint that edge out and get rid of that dark wing on the side. So now I go to work on these branches. Again, same thing. I start with a dark, it's a little bit of a purplish gray, Payne's gray, a little bit of red some white, a little bit of cobalt blue, and creating a darkish gray for purplish gray for the underside of that snow. Once I get that down, I'll go back and do my mid-tone. Which is really just adding white to that color. And there's my mid-tone. You can see how the values are very close to that background. So it makes that branch sort of disappear. 
but when I come back in then with my highlight which is almost pure white it's white with just a little bit of cobalt blue in it um, then that'll make those branches stand out against that background so but first I get that mid-tone snow color in there on those branches and then I come back with my snow highlight color again that's white with a little bit of blue actually here it looks like I might have a yeah so before I went to the highlight color I actually lightened up that midtone a little bit and added a little bit more blue I wanted a little bit more reflected blue color to come into that snow now I'm going back in with my highlight so you can do this many times you need to you can add layers you can go back and add shadow and then go back over with your lighter color again. Okay, so just to repeat myself here, um, I'm not trying to get a buildup of snow here, mostly just that there's a coating of snow on these branches and they've, they're frosty and a little light dusting of snow. You'll notice too in the upper left corner, um, I didn't completely get those branches out of there when I repainted those, you know, painted those branches out. So I will be going back at some point and putting another layer over there and just sort of eliminating that and cleaning up the edge of that leftmost chickadee. But here you can see I do all the branches, the branches up top, all to get a coat. And they, here I had already put down the dark and the mid-tone, and I'm just getting a little bit of bright snow up on top of those branches as well. You can do as much or as little as you want. Um, you could add branches at this point. Sometimes if you use a little bit of that light color, you can add branches that don't exist. That looks like the branch is just completely coated with frost or with snow like there so then once the branches are done I move on to the finishing details get this in focus and one of the things is that when I got to this point I realized that I had sort of eliminated a lot of my shadow I I didn't have enough shadow between the birds near the bottom of the birds and so I mixed up I used some glazing liquid or glazing medium I got some of my Payne's gray and the glazing medium and I just created added a little bit of water and you could just if you don't have glazing medium you can just use water and I'm just stroking on some of that here and it's because it's using glazing medium and or water you can then go and put that on and then just spread that around and blend it in so that all the texture that you've painted into those breasts and those birds and those feathers underneath will still show through and the glazing medium is transparent and it darkens it down a little bit creates a little bit of shadow in there but you don't lose all that work that you did before you don't lose all that texture and some of that color still comes through so I use that here. Here you can see what I did is I pulled some of that into that center bird and then use the end of the brush to sort of pull some of it off so that I'm creating the effect of those feathers being in front of that shadow area and letting some of that light that was there underneath come through. Now I'm taking that really soft flat brush that I hadn't used yet but I showed in the beginning of the first video. Taking that and while that is still wet I'm just blending that out so it's nice and soft. So again, I can put in that glazing medium and then take that soft brush and just push it around a little bit. And what I've done is create a little bit more shadow. So I go through both panels and all six birds and I just go in and create a little bit more shadow so that the birds have a little bit more dark underneath, a little bit more dark between them. Helps to round them out a little bit. Put it on, use a soft brush to just blend it out. If you have to go back afterwards and put a few light feathers on top, you can do that. You just let it dry and then just go back in like we did before. Use the same technique and add some feathers on top. 
Here I'm adding a little, I, you, you saw I just added a little bit of that glazing medium to the bottom of the branch as well, just to create more shadow area underneath there. So I do this for both panels and I do it, you can see here I'm doing it along the face by the beak just so that the cheeks stand out and look like they're catching a little bit more light. And then I go in, see how light it is between those birds? There would be more shadow there. So I'm just, again, using some Payne's Gray and glazing medium, but you could just use water. I'm going in and putting some of that in there and then blending it out. Underneath that wing would be darker, so I'm going in and adding that shadow. And then blending out that edge. And again, between those birds and near the bottom of that bird, there'd be more shadow. I want a little bit more variety also just in that breast area, so I'm going in and adding that glaze. And then I'll come in in a moment and blend some of that out so it's nice and soft and it just sinks into the texture that I already have on the canvas with those feathers. And you can keep layering. You could let this dry and if you need some darker areas you can go back and add a, another layer of glaze. If you need to tint the color you could do the same thing. Just mix up a glaze of color, add it to where you need a little extra color. Here I just had to get the underside of that bird a little bit and add a little bit of color to the breast. And then again just around the face area there so that I make sure that the head looks rounded and then there's some shadow by the bill and the beak. Then I took a little bit of that same color, the same glaze, and just sort of created a few more diffuse branches in the background, give it a little bit more visual interest. They just sort of disappear back there, but instead of having open areas, I filled them in a little bit. Then the very last detail I've done here is now that I've painted the branches, I don't want to have that hard edge those birds would be sitting on that branch and some of those feathers would sort of be um, covering that branch a little bit, you know, just overlapping that branch a little bit. You wouldn't necessarily have a hard edge there. So I'm going back in with some of the color that I used for mixing up the same color I used for the feathers on the breast and just adding a little bit to soften that edge between the bird itself, the birds themselves, and the branch. And that's it. That's the completion of these two paintings. Um, I hope you tackle them, and or, or if not, I hope you found something that was useful that you can use in your own painting. I appreciate your watching. I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel so that you get you're aware of future videos. And thanks again for watching.